In this video, we'll look at a brand new type of component in Lumos called interactive components. This is the first of many, and we're gonna start with this slider component. This can work with CMS content or static content. We'll drop in our slider component here, and inside the slot, we'll add a couple card components like so. And I'll go ahead and duplicate this a few times. Now, for this card component, it doesn't need a class like swipe or slide or anything like that. I've just wrapped the card component in an extra div because that card component gets a little bit of extra padding to create that fake gap like so whenever it's inside of the slider. When it's outside of the slider, it doesn't have any padding, but inside the slider, that first tile gets that padding to create the gap. Now that we have that set, we can set the number of slides for each screen size. So on our large screen size, we have four slides per view. Uh, next one, medium, three slides per view. Our next one, small, two slides per view. And next one, we have one slide per view. And we could set this to something like one and a half slides per view. It's all just based on a percent. And if we go ahead and take out any of these, it'll just inherit from the next sort of size up. So in this case, we're using uh, this two here, uh, two slides per view. And this is set with container queries. So it's based on the available space we have. Meaning if I change the slider to be inside a two column grid, it's now using this uh, small available space is what we have for it here. But whenever the layout wraps and we have more space for the slider, it can now have the four slides per view, then trickle down to three slides per view and two and go all the way down like so. So this is just uh, much more powerful. And here we set overflow to visible. So we're not cropping the slide here. We could do overflow hidden to crop off both sides completely, but I don't don't actually want to do that here. Uh, but one issue we will have is that once we move the slider, it actually overlaps this content here. So to fix that, we can actually set our overflow to crop left, which uses a clip path to only crop the left side of the slider. And so just like that, we have this set while still seeing the other side. Now, if you've watched my previous slider tutorial, uh, you'll know that to actually create a gap that's rim based to a swiper, we need to have an offset div that basically sets a little bit of negative um, margin here. And that's equal to half of the gap, negative on each side. And then uh, the padding is half of the gap on each side, and that's what creates that. Now, since we have gap variable modes here in Lumos where we can change our gap amount from a variable mode, this is gonna work by just using a single gap utility on the parent. So I can change my gap to something really large like eight, and that's increased the left and right padding on the slide and the negative margin required to make this perfectly line up. So we have an eight gap in between the two slides um, just from changing that class. So that's how we change that there. Now for the controls, we can turn the visibility of our controls completely off if needed. And we might decide we want our controls in another place. So for instance, maybe inside this content, I have a button wrapper with, um, I, I want my controls here. So to connect these controls to this slider, we need to have any kind of parent, could be the layout div, could be the whole section, with an attribute name of data slider and an attribute value of component. And that way it looks to this entire section as the component and it knows any buttons or elements inside are connected to the child. So if I grab this button, for instance, it can have a data slider previous attribute. The other one can have a data slider next. And that way it knows that these buttons here are actually connected to that slider because they're in the same section with that data slider component attribute. So now that we have that set, we can control multiple settings. So we can turn off the scrubbing if we want just a swipe to change slide. We can turn on free mode if we want to, when we release, uh, have it not snap to the nearest. We can turn off mouse wheel uh, with mouse wheel on when we swipe left and right on our trackpad, it moves. Uh, we can turn on slide to click slide. So if we click on a slide, that one slides into view and we can set our speed and we could add other settings to this if we'd like. Now we're also gonna want to possibly use the CMS in some cases. Now one way I could do this is by just launching the app from my previous tutorial called Slot Drop, and I can add a collection list into the slot, and then I could kind of style this however uh, needed. But in this case, what I'm actually going to do instead, uh, just for anyone who doesn't have the app, is we'll create that collection list in a component um, outside. So I'll just add in a div and I'll drop a collection list inside of that div. And I'll go ahead and link that collection list to blogs. And I'll go, actually, let's just connect the, 
you know, make the actual collection. Uh, we could wrap it in a div or not, doesn't matter. And I'll call this my blog CMS. I'll put it in a group called CMS and create. And the only requirement here is that the collection list element has a class of swiper wrapper. All the other classes will be set by our JavaScript, so we don't have to worry about that. But this just keeps things looking nice in the designer view. Um, so we have those elements stacked side by side. And inside of that collection item, I'll just go ahead and add in an image element for now. And I'll go ahead and connect that to my CMS. And so now I'll go ahead and just take this blog's CMS and I'll want to paste it inside of the slot of my swiper. And notice the items are getting the right padding. Everything is set there. And now we have a slider that's completely connected to the CMS, but gives us all the same controls as before for breakpoint settings and everything else we need. And we can go ahead and duplicate this section to have multiple of them throughout the page. Each one controls its own slider. And we can have different kind of content inside um, each of these. So that's how to use the Lumos slider component. I hope this helps you out when building out your Webflow projects.